When you lose a special horse, it can take years to connect with another. How long then can it take when you lose two special horses? Find out in this episode of Barn Stories. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prince, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. This episode shares a theme with many true tales we've published in Equus over the years. It's the story of a woman grappling with the loss of a special horse and seeking to start over with a new one. Of course, it's inherently unfair to expect a new horse to quickly fill the void left by one you've loved for years, but it's natural to try to make that happen. And there's an extra wrinkle to this story. The author lost not just one cherished horse from her youth, but two in a very short time frame. This made her especially hesitant and vulnerable as she searched for a way forward. As you might expect, she didn't find the perfect horse immediately. In fact, she found a very imperfect horse who needed her as much as she needed him. So let's listen to Yesterday and Today, written by Rebecca Owen and read by Taylor Autumn. When I was 13 years old, my family purchased two small bay geldings. Both were Morgan Crosses, around 14 hands tall. The app for Traveler said that he was good with barrels, kids, and cows. When we arrived to look at him, we were told that if we didn't buy him, he would go to auction. Lucky's story was equally as sad. His owner needed to sell him to buy shoes, dewormer, and grain for the rest of her herd. For beginner owners who bought our horses based on our hearts as much as our heads, we hit the jackpot. Traveler and Lucky were the best teachers and friends I could have hoped to have. We explored the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest and competed in Pony Club. Although Traveler was my horse and Lucky technically belonged to my dad, I was equally enthralled with both geldings. The only damper on our adventures was the fact that both were well into their 20s when we met. Our days together were numbered from the start. When I went to college, Traveler and Lucky were retired, but they remained the focus of my monthly visits home. Riding didn't matter. I felt the same excitement each time I drove up to the barn driveway, and I felt anchored simply being in their presence. But as I brushed and fed them, I noticed the visible ribs, sagging backs, and missing teeth. I was dedicated to caring for them until the end. I just didn't want it to come, ever. When they were gone, what would I do? I couldn't imagine devoting my life so thoroughly to any other horse. One soggy fall evening, my phone rang. Traveler was down. It was time to face the inevitable. I lived five hours away, but I jumped in my car and sped south. The sun had only come up by the time I had arrived, and I could see where Traveler was still sprawled on the grass near the water trough. His breathing was slow, so I sat on the muddy ground, holding his big head in my lap. The veterinarian delivered the final shots, and my first bay gelding was gone. I wasn't surprised to get a similar call just weeks later. Lucky had stopped eating. The two horses were inseparable in life, so it only made sense that they would leave together too. As with Traveler, I sat with Lucky and traced the whorls on his forehead. The November sun was unseasonably warm. You are very brave, I told him. You were very strong. The horses were buried side by side at the bottom of the hill in their pasture. It's a private space shrouded in blackberry bushes that reminds me of all the summers we spent together. Their absence was overwhelming. I spent time grooming other geriatric horses at the rescue where I volunteered. 
but it wasn't the same. I couldn't help but measure each new horse by my old friends. When I tried riding, I was surprised to discover a new set of fears. I had gotten so used to the behaviors and abilities of my own horses that anything else felt foreign and terrifying. I'd been applying to graduate schools and chose a program in Minnesota. During the long drive from Oregon, I considered signing up for riding lessons in my new home. It seemed like a good idea, a compromise for the grief that I felt. I would be moving forward, relearning what I had been taught years ago. But why did it feel like I was still betraying my old friends? I was still conflicted, but I found a small dressage barn and arranged a lesson. As I was being shown around the facilities, I suddenly stopped short when I saw a small, bay gelding loitering in his box stall. He was short and compact, and his coat was a deep red. His neck was strong and muscular. His mane had a slight wave to it, and he had a white star between his eyes. He looked like a perfect blend of Traveler and Lucky. Beloved Buddy, his nameplate read. With proven ingredients, guaranteed results, and no loading dose, Flex Plus Max is the joint supplement you can count on to deliver the most joint support per scoop from day one. Flex Plus Max is proven joint support with a powerful combination of key ingredients to support your horse's joint health, and it's guaranteed to work. With just one scoop per day, Flex Plus Max delivers high levels of important joint care ingredients, plus Flex Plus Max is a highly bioavailable formula, so it starts working quickly. For comprehensive joint support without compromise, turn to Flex Plus Max to keep your horse moving freely and comfortably every day. As it turned out, Buddy was anything but beloved. I was told that the seven-year-old Morgan Quarter Horse Cross had been abandoned by his previous owner. Several boarders tried him out, but... He wasn't right for dressage or for kids. He was being used as a school horse. Noticing my interest, my new instructor suggested that I try Buddy for my upcoming ride. She led him to the arena, showed me his tack, and detailed his preferences and proclivities. As I climbed on board, I felt a sharp pang. The view through his black-tipped ears was so familiar. I suddenly miss my old horses more than ever. I can't say it was a perfect match from the start, but I continued to ride Buddy for my weekly lessons as the crisp fall weather gave way to several feet of snow and sub-zero temperatures. I started to learn his tricks. If I didn't pay attention to how his ears flicked forward or the click of the bit between his teeth, he dropped his shoulder, spun around, and scurried toward the arena gate. Buddy wasn't finely tuned, but he did have lovely gaits. He could smile on command and unzip a zipper on a coat. While Traveler and Lucky were serious, kind horses, Buddy was a bossy teenager who liked practical jokes. And I sympathized with him. His behavior stemmed from boredom. He didn't like being a lesson horse, endlessly circling the small arena and carting around riders of varying abilities. He needed his own person. Nor did I feel fully settled in Minnesota. I miss the mountains and rain and plan to move home when I finish school. I had started to entertain thoughts of buying Buddy. Maybe he just needed a change of scenery too. One spring afternoon, my riding instructor mentioned she needed to reduce her herd and that Buddy had to go. He really likes you, she said. He's yours for one dollar. I caught my breath. As a student, I was in no position to take on that responsibility, and I couldn't even afford to ship him home. But from my time at the rescue, I had seen what could happen to free or very cheap horses. I had to help this small bay gelding. I came up with a plan. My friends from the horse rescue drive to the East Coast and back each fall. I asked if they'd have room in their trailer for Buddy and if they could keep him while I finished my last year of school. They agreed. The night I became his owner, 
Buddy had been banished to his stall after dumping a rider during a lesson. Just take him, the instructor said. I don't even want the dollar. I reached into my purse, collected all the coins I could find, and handed them to her. She shrugged and put the money in her pocket, and I looked at my new horse. I was terrified. He obviously wasn't as obedient as Traveler or Lucky, and he might never be. How would I get the courage to ride him on trails? Would I have the courage to ride him at all? But I didn't have to worry about that quite yet. Buddy arrived safely in Oregon, and my friends kept me updated and sent me videos of him in pasture. He looked happy, and I felt encouraged to see him thriving in his new home. When I finally returned to my beloved Pacific Northwest, I went to see Buddy right away. He was filthy, so I took him in and brushed him off, and he called for his herb mates the entire time. My hands shook as I scraped at the caked mud. It took several weeks to work up the courage to ride, and as we finally ambled around the arena, I felt that familiar sadness at what and who he wasn't. But with each ride, I sensed a shift in his behaviors and in my reactions to them. As the months went on, our interactions became more relaxed and familiar, and I realized several important things. One, he is neither traveler nor lucky, and he never will be. And two, that's okay. And, in fact, it had never been fair to compare the three horses. I had met Traveler and Lucky in their later years, when they were perfect, wise teachers. They kept me safe. But now, I'm not that 13-year-old girl anymore. And it's my turn to apply my patience and skills to help Buddy become a horse of their caliber. I'll never forget my first two bay geldings and I'll never replace them. But I know now that it takes more than a year or two to create a lovely bond with a horse. And Buddy and I have plenty of time. We'll get there. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.